Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your very own pivot table in Microsoft Excel. A pivot table is a great way to summarize your data, and it gives you the ability to view your data in different ways and gives you new insights on things that may not be obvious when looking at just the data itself. It's also a great way to create reports and allow you to slice and dice your data depending on who the audience is. And with that said, let's get into the video. So in this example, we're running a construction company with several projects on the go in North America. And there are two questions that we want to answer. One is, how much budget did we have for each project separated out by country? And the second question is, by project, what is the variance and percent variance between actual spends and budget? Right now we have a column for date, country, state and province, the project name, the deliverable ID, the actual spends on the project, and the budget we have for that project. There are a couple things to watch out for before creating your pivot table. There are things like having no empty column headers and continuous data, meaning that there are no blank rows. Now this part is optional, but it's considered best practice, and that is to format your data as a table. So what I'll do is I'll go up to here where it says format as table, and then I'll select one of the table types or my table as headers, then I'll just click OK. So here we formatted our data as a table, and it's called table 1. But what we can do is be a little more specific and rename this to something more descriptive. So we'll call it project data, and then hit enter. Great, so now our data is in a pivot table friendly type format. Next, we'll insert our pivot table and place it in a new worksheet. So we'll go up to the Insert tab and then select Pivot Table. And we're going to go and create it in a new worksheet and using our Project Data table. Then click OK. And now it's inserted a pivot table in a new worksheet. So right now our pivot table is blank at the moment and we're instructed to choose fields from the pivot table list in order to build our pivot table. So on the right side of the screen, we have our pivot table fields, which are actually the column headers in our project data table. Beneath the pivot table fields are four areas used to actually build our pivot table. Let's bring our questions back and start answering them using a pivot table. Our first question is, how much budget do we have for each project separated out by country? So the way I'll answer this question is by first clicking and dragging the project name field into the rows area. Notice that once the field is in the area, it's automatically reflected in our pivot table. So now that we have the project name, we'll insert the country field and we'll put it in our columns area. Now that we have the project name and the country in the pivot table, all that's left is to add in the budget. So we'll click and drag the budget field and we're going to put that in the values area. So now we have a complete answer to our question. We're able to show the budget by project separated it out by country. So the next question is, by project, what is the variance and percent variance between actual spends and budget? So to answer this question, we don't need the country field anymore. So what I'll do is I'll click the field and drag it back to the field list. Then I'm going to add the actual spends field into the values area right above the budget one. So now we have our projects and their actual spends and their budget. To calculate the variance, we're going to use what's called a calculated field. A calculated field allows you to create a brand new field for your pivot table using existing ones. So to do this, we're going to go up to this area called Fields, Items, and Sets, and then click on Calculated Field. So for the name, we'll put Variance. And then in the formula, we're going to insert actual spends minus budget and then click OK. And it will automatically insert this new field into our pivot table. So now we've calculated the variance. And from there, we can now calculate the percent variance. So let's go back up and create another calculated field. And we'll call this percent variance. And to calculate this, we'll do, we'll insert the variance column and divide it by the budget. 
and then click OK. And now we can see it's added that new field into our pivot table. So let's move on to formatting our pivot table. So just like when we're working in any other spreadsheet, we can change the format of numbers in our pivot table. So for our percent variance, I can right click any of the numbers and then go to number format. And then I'm going to select percentage and then click OK. So the variance column is already formatted, so I'm going to format the budget and actual spends next. I'm just going to click accounting and zero decimals for budget and then the same format for the actual spends. Now that we've formatted the values of our pivot table, let's take a look at how pivot tables break down multiple fields within an area. So to show this a little bit better, I'm going to add the country field and we're going to place it right above the project name. So we can see that in our pivot table that the country field is listed up top and then the list of projects right underneath. Now this pivot table layout might work for some people, but I much prefer a different layout that's out there and it's called the tabular form. So the way to get to that layout, you go up to the design tab and then click on report layout. And then it's just this option here, show in tabular form. What this does is it makes each field of the pivot table its own column, which in my opinion, allows you to see your data better. Now, if you look closely at our pivot table, you can see that there's these plus and minus buttons. So if I was to click this minus button, it would collapse all the projects that are under the country Canada. And if I was to click it again, it would show all the projects. If you would rather not show this plus or minus button, if you go up to the pivot table analyze tab, you can click this button here to toggle it on or off. I personally like to have it on. A couple more things that we're going to do to format our pivot table is we're going to choose a design. So under the design tab, there's a bunch of styles to pick from. I really like this one. Then I'm going to include some grid lines into my pivot table by going up to this tab here and then selecting my pivot table, the entire pivot table, and then going to the home tab and then selecting all borders. Just makes the pivot table look a little more sharper. Let's move on to sorting and filtering our pivot table. So by default, a pivot table is sorted in ascending order. We can change the sorting so that it's in the opposite direction by clicking one of the filters here and then clicking sort Z to A. We aren't just limited to sorting by rows though, we can sort the values too. So if we wanted to view the projects that have spent more than, the, than what they've been budgeted, we can right click the sum of variance column, any of the numbers, and then click on sort and then click on sort largest to smallest. Now when it comes to filtering, there are a couple of ways to do that. I can filter by country by clicking the filter button in here and then selecting a country. But a really good option is to use slicers. And to bring in slicers, you can right click any of the fields here and then click add a slicer. And I'll add a box like this and then from here, you can just click an item and it'll filter the table quickly. By default, you can choose one at a time, but if you click the multi-select button, then you can select both. And we're just gonna add one more field as a slicer, which is our state and province. And from here, the rest is totally up to you on how you want to present this data to your audience. You can use a pivot table and include slicers so that your audience is able to click and filter your pivot table and do the whole slicing and dicing thing. Or you can just leave your pivot table as is as a standalone report. And that is how you create a pivot table in Microsoft Excel. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video.